Chloe. Chloe, how do you keep getting in? Huh? Billy from Permapastures Farm. Okay, here's your next update on the chicken tractor on steroids, and we're going to cover a different part of it as we always do every week. And last week we kind of covered what to do if you had to be a little more static. We're going to cover a little bit more of that and then show you some other problems and how to mitigate them. Okay, so here we have our two piles last week. If you look at it, we had these two piles up here um, that we combined. And this is honestly the way we prefer to do it because it seems like Everything works even better when we can take this one and a half cubic yards and turn it into three cubic yards. It seems to, it seems to break down better, more evenly, and, um, and also it's easier to manage at the end of the day. So that's exactly, we're gonna do the same thing all over again. So you see this pile that isn't quite as broken down as this one. We're gonna take these two and combine them together. Um, and then we're gonna take that one in their cage and we're gonna move it down the hill. The one that was here before um, I think we might just go ahead and leave it in the net. We'll kind of play with that as we go. But we're going to cover some other things because we got a viewer question asking, what do you do if you can't source food scraps? Now, I will say, y'all, that even in the smallest towns that we've lived in, places like New Boston, Texas, Decab, Texas, even in those places, if you look hard enough, we found things and we found places where we were able to get food scraps. So if you can do it in those small food deserts, believe me, there's there's places if you just have to look far and wide. And sometimes you don't always ask for permission if you know what I'm talking about, as long as it's not illegal. So we're gonna go ahead and flip these piles like we normally do. We're gonna move this chicken tractor a little bit down the hill. The sheep kind of went before them and knocked down a lot of this stuff. And then it's off to the races. And then we're gonna cover after we reassemble these piles and before we let the chickens out, I'm going to show you a couple of little tricks that might help you along the way and cover those issues concerning people that don't necessarily have access to food scraps or just don't have the time. It could very well be that. Whatever the case is, we're going to cover it. that were combined last week. So this is three cubic yards. Look at that, it's already, I mean, honestly, we could turn this outside the cage. It's largely compost. We're just gonna give it another week to give them three piles. And then if you look down here, it's nowhere near as broken down, but hey, guess what? In a week, it's amazing what can happen. This is gonna look just like that. How cool is that? And so we took the one pile that was inside the compost cage and we turned it out on by itself. So. They have three different piles like normal. There's nothing different about that, but we're gonna, we're gonna throw a little audible in here and we're gonna cover what to do, let's say if your chickens aren't disturbing the pile. Remember, nine times out of 10, that has to do with there being way too much heat in the pile, but it could be that they've extracted all the biota out of it. Maybe your pile's inactive. 
We're gonna show you how to do that and it's super simple. And you, many of you are probably already thinking, well, okay, I know that, but we'll cover it anyway. And we're also, when we get them out, we're also gonna show how to do this with regular store-bought feed because there are some changes that you need to make. All right, y'all, we're gonna simulate what to do. Let's say your pile went dead, it's not active, chickens ain't that interested. See, I'm gonna let them out and the first thing they're gonna do Everything at this point is something of a Pavlovian response, but they never forget this. Hear that? That's a little bit of layer feed. And when I say a little bit, like maybe a quarter cup, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you what to do. They're gonna naturally go to these piles, but I'm gonna show you how to redirect them. We're gonna check this out first, the cage. You're gonna say, okay, we don't have any grub in there. But check this out. If they're not messing with the pile and it's inactive and it's not because of heat, just put a little bit of that on there. It doesn't take much. And they're gonna go straight to it. Or not. Okay, so typically they jump right after it, but tactical mistake on my part because honestly it shows how uninterested in typical store-bought pellets they are at this point, honestly. You look at them, they're going around, they're doing no other thing. But typically, if they don't have what they want, they will jump right on top of that. So they made a liar out of me. But hey, that happens in this system. Now I'm gonna show you what to do if, let's say you don't have food scraps or access to them or enough of them. And let's say all you have is regular store-bought feed. First thing we're gonna do is get their old uh, bedding outside of the tra tractor, put it down inside their compost cage, and then we'll talk about it from there. Remember, I just dumped some of that store-bought grain up there, but look where they are. They're in the spot where this compost cage once was. I can't even see what they're eating. They're eating little things that to you and I are microscopic. It's the microorganisms, a little bit of bacteria they're picking up. It's, it's indistinguishable. That's all they're going after right now. So it just goes to show you how awesome this system can be. They're not gonna go after that store-bought feed because they have something better. I mean, imagine you have one of those, um, you have Emerald Lagasse cooking for you, right? And then you got a buffet from Furs Cafeteria. Which one are you gonna eat? That's exactly what's going on right here. So, but they will eat it if, <laughs> egg on my face, but hey, that's part of doing this, y'all. We don't hide our mistakes. So in this system, if it were completely dead, if these piles didn't have any life in them, believe me, they'd decimate that pile. We ha we've had to do it before when we were figuring out how to make this work in this capacity. So we wet down, Michelle went ahead and wet down the compost cage. We took the bedding from the inside of the tractor for over a week. We stuck that back down. Now, ultimately we're gonna put feed on it. But first we're gonna take this, stick it back in, replace the bedding, and then we'll talk about it. Because that point I'm gonna address what to do if you don't have food scraps. And we've actually done it that way before just to see if it would work. All right, y'all, so we're to the point where, like I said, every week, the reason this, we give you a weekly update because it can be so many moving parts in here. Now they see this red bucket and they know what time it is and they're like, hey dude, where's my grub? And I'm gonna give it to them here in a second, but I wanna address those people that are doing this system and all you have or all you wanna do or all you have available to you or because of time limitations, whatever the case may be, let's say all you have is store-bought food. Now it's been many moons since we've raised chickens or pigs on store-bought feed. But if I remember right, I think it's somewhere around a quarter pound per day per bird for meat birds in a system like this. I Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what it is. Whatever that is, 
if you're using this system, if you go with that, you're going to have to do two things. Number one, you're going to have to think about it in this system. If you take crumbly or crumbly food or um, pellets or anything, it's just going to slip in between the cracks, even though you wet it down. So you're going to have to ferment it or at least let it, you're going to have to fill it with water overnight so it doesn't go through the cracks, number one. Number two, and this is critical, all that store-bought food is formulated with all the protein and everything these birds typically need. I don't know, maybe these days in inflation, maybe they're putting sawdust in there these days. I don't know for sure. But let's just assume the ratios are correct. When they do that and you feed them exactly what they need, guess what they're not going to do? They're not going to disturb those piles. So when we've done it in the past just to experiment with it, what we've done, instead of giving whatever their normal day's rations would be, cut it in half. Because if you don't, I guarantee you, they're almost not, they'll, they'll mess with the piles a little bit, but they're not going to wipe them out. You need them to decimate those piles looking for their protein. The biota, the worms, all the microorganisms, they get out of there in the form of high-end protein. They have got to get it out of those piles. If you overfeed them here, they're not going to go there, but a good barometer a good place to start is to go ahead and give them half what you would normally give them and then work from there. Um, you may even have to walk it back a little bit. If I remember correctly, the way we did it before, it was back to not just half, it was a quarter to get them to work these piles over. So that's what we found out. Let me know what some of you out there find out, but you know what they really prefer? Look at this. In this little batch of food scraps, they got a little bit of corn chips, which we went down and some rice and they're getting some protein in here not a whole lot but by and large they're getting what they need in the course basically in the course of a day they still have access to green grass they can still get that especially on the downhill side they'll get it as they need it they'll get the protein as they need it that is the beauty of this system and we found out essentially the same thing jeff lawton found out within the system if you look at jeff's version of it <clears throat> who, by the way, came up with this system, and I believe he got it or inspired by Carl Hammer from Vermont Compost. Jeff adapted it to make it work for people like us, and we adapted it even more to do it with things that we don't necessarily have, like cow manure and some of the other things. Um, you're going to have to play with it. We've tested this thing for years and years and years, and we've done a lot of different iterations of it. But we need additional testing out there. So we're asking for those of you that are able-bodied that can do this, knock yourself out give it a shot um at the end of the day there is no other way i intend to ever raise my raise my chickens because at the end of the day find me another system out there that when it's off and running is producing one and a half cubic yards of compost per week and at the same time getting these birds ready to put in the freezer which brings me to another point um you do have options in this system this is why i say this is the most revolutionary chicken and compost producing system on the planet because you can have it go non-stop what i'm thinking about doing is re retooling this system taking out all the roosters putting them in the freezer removing this chicken tractor and replacing it with our layer tractor and keeping this thing going you can have it go indefinitely producing compost it could be a money-making thing if you need right here we keep all of our fertility right here on the property but if you wanted to sell that compost high quality compost to your neighbors, you could do that. For us, having compost and having it in massive abundance, we can't get enough of it because of all the places we use it and the benefits we see in it. But folks, in these times of high inflation and it's only gonna go higher, if you don't believe me, just go to the grocery store and find out. Folks, give it a shot and let us know how it works out for you. But stay tuned because I think what we're gonna do next is replace our entire layer flock uh, with these guys by and large take out all the roosters and keep this sucker going we might just go ahead and do that so folks i hope this helps absorb what you think is useful take what you think is useful but maybe use some of these tips as a starting point that we're providing so until next time remember y'all subscribe hit that notification bell tell other folks especially in this time of high inflation about what we're doing and see if they are interested in replicating it not to aggrandize us but to champion this system that I think is, there's nothing better in the planet, in my opinion. Till next time, this is Billy the Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. 
We'll see y'all next time.